This is episode 89 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. Thanks for making us part of your morning routine. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Apples, apples everywhere. How do you like Mm. them apples? One thing I do want to say about the apple that is sometimes thought of like, oh, in the garden, oh, don't eat the forbidden fruit, the apple. Well, no, we don't know what's an apple. We don't know that. We don't know that. I feel like it was more of a nefarious fruit, like a kiwi with a super thick skin. Oh, nefarious. But it was good. It was good to look at. It looked like it would be tasty and good for food. So it's something that looked inviting. When you say the word apples, I mean something has to come to yeah. your mind right oh, away. Yeah. Oh, look at that big smile! It's it's. Mm. I know nobody can see it, but I can. Um, <laughs> so what's about my the, big smile? Yeah, your big smile. I got a big apples, smile. Big smile. So yeah. what comes to mind? Oh, apple picking with my wife and our little baby girl. That's what comes to mind. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of become something like of a tradition. I mean, we're in a. If if you live in a beautiful area for this kind of thing, then you really just got to take the advantage with the orchards and getting to be out there on a crisp fall day. But it's a beautiful thing. We got to do it again this year. And I was thinking to myself, thinking to myself out there in the apple orchard as these trees are just burgeoning, bursting with ripe, juicy apples. I mean, so many that you can hardly pick one without half a dozen others falling off you feel bad because you feel like they're just all falling to the ground but it's just because these trees are so full of this amazing fruit and so i'm thinking to myself this doesn't happen in nature without humans this doesn't happen without people now go with me here for a second okay. you see a wild apple tree there are some apples that might have some sweetness on them and i don't know all of the biology behind it and stuff but basically they're going to be small they're going to be really tough and they're not going to have tons and tons and tons of this just incredible amazing fruit you might find some but these apples like you get in an orchard they're the result of of farmers they're the result of scientists in in some cases they're the result of people who know what they're doing and who do it generation after generation Now, I say this because it's interesting. There are people who would have you think that the only possible effect that we humans can have on the world around us is a bad one. Oh, we are the invasive species. Oh, we are the worst thing that ever happened to this planet. Leave all that off for a second and just realize God made us and put us where first? In a garden. He put us in a garden to tend it and our proper relationship to the world around us is to make it better, is to bring more fruit from it. Uh, Apple trees on their own, they can get choked out by other things. They can kind of produce these little fruits that aren't super useful for all kinds of stuff. But when people get involved lovingly, lovingly with the world around them, we can make something that's really beautiful. So uh, take it or leave it. That's what popped into my head as I was picking these apples and just thinking, there's more apples than I even know what to do with here. These are just so full and abundant. Well, praise God that he's given us the ability to work with his world in that way. And now, now I have more apples than I possibly know what to do with because I couldn't stop myself. We picked like 50 pounds and I'm just stuck. So many apples. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm an apple. Let me explain. I'll go in. It's amazing that I even like apples because you know how you're influenced by your childhood and things that happen, maybe sometimes even mm. subconsciously, that uh, so when, when, you know, what do you think about apples? Two things entered my mind almost immediately. And then I thought, wow, it is amazing that I even like apples. And I do. I do like apples. But as a child, first thing I thought about was a, I think it was about, I don't know, third grade, fourth, somewhere in that area. There was a birthday party I attended and we did a bobbing for apples. Ooh. Uh, right? No, 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 no. Right. Yeah, well, anyway. It does not I, sound fun. No, well, no. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Right. And I never got the apple, and it was frustrating. I didn't like it. It's like, Ugh, apples. And, and it's gross. It, and it's, Sorry, just have to like say everybody that. Everybody putting their face there is in that. the same water. Okay, so there's right. one at the king of my mind. I, I can still, it was in the basement. Was, okay, never mind. It was terrible. I didn't like it. <laughs> but here's my next memory of apples. We had a couple of apple like some maybe it was crab apples i don't know it was just in the back of our yard way in the back and didn't really pay much attention to them all i know is when i had to mow the lawn cut the grass whatever Uh you call it back 
in the very back, you know, I'd be mowing the lawn. All of a sudden, at certain times of year, these apples, and we didn't take care of them, so it was like apples fell to the ground, yep. and they were all over the place. Most of them were rotten, and mm-hmm. it smelled bad back there because it was rotten apples. And all I knew is every time I cut the grass, I had to go back, and there was grass around it. So I was like, ugh. So between the examples <laughs> of the bobbing for apples, which is all the bad things we all talked about, and then the smelly, rotten apples that I had to cut the grass when I was a kid. Ugh. It just wasn't very pleasant. So then I thought, the reason I said I'm an apple is like, you know, at one point I wasn't all that pleasant in my life either because I didn't turn my life over to Jesus until later. And and it can be said that, you know, maybe I didn't smell so good in the spiritual realm mm. and, and things. And um, so, yeah, life can turn around. I like apples now. Isn't it amazing mm. that I love a good crisp Apple. Oh, it's so, so good. Even though I had the memory and the history of like apples. No, I'm not all that good. And so sometimes I'll just think of God going like, hey, look, Mm. look, that's my he's. Oh, he's the apple of my eye. Right. Mm. Mm. There you go. That uh, it can turn around. It can go from something that is not so good and not so pleasant into something really, really good. So I'm an apple. How about you? (laughs) I love that you brought up that scripture. Uh, Psalm 17 says, keep me as the apple of the eye. And this is about God's eye. And the apple of your eye is the pupil, the very center of your eye. But the Hebrew word that's used in this scripture in Psalm means the little man. Huh. Hmm. And so I don't know if you've ever stared into somebody's eye, you know, into their pupil, and maybe you see yourself, wow. you know, in the mm-hmm. reflection, and you know that all yeah. they can see is is you. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what this is about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's this prayer that God would be watching me, and this little man would be reflected. And it got me thinking about God, the man, Jesus, and how God the Father must have been watching the baptism of Jesus. And what does he say? He says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And because of God's pleasure through Jesus, he can look at us Mm. and see us in a totally different way than we would ever see ourselves. The apple of his eye, this this love that he has for us because of Jesus, not because of anything that we've done, that our little selves are right there at the center of his attention. And somehow he manages to watch each one of us with the same commitment and intentionality as he does the next. I I don't know how he, that's part of what makes God God. Yeah. But the next time you look at an apple, for me, it would be an apple that sits on the counter for far too long because everybody in my house says they're going to eat them, but then nobody does. And then eventually I just (laughs) throw them away. That's a whole nother episode of the podcast. But when I see that apple now, it's going to be a reminder that God has his eye Mm. on me. He sees it all and he sees me in a way that I would never see myself because when he sees me, he sees little man, he sees Jesus, his son, with whom he is well pleased. And he is good to the core. So are you. (laughs) We hope the rest of your day is just as much fun as this. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Very important for me to clarify. Very important. Anytime I talk about cats to Mm -hmm. say, I appreciate cats. I appreciate cats. You just don't like them. No, no, no. I like them too. I like them and I appreciate them. (laughs) I just don't have one. I Uh I do. I do. I don't, I don't have one, never have had one. So I hesitate to talk about them because I know Mm. cat people very opinionated about your cat. I know, I know your cat is sweet, but they cannot taste sweetness. Now you might say, oh, my cat has had ice cream before. Oh, I've given my kitty cake or maybe you've done something like this if you own a cat. They say, the science says, cats can't taste it. Wow. They can't taste they sweetness. They can't even appreciate the ice cream that I'm sacrificing? Mm-hmm. Huh. Nope. If you're doing that, huh. they can't. Because see, God designed them, the food he designed them to catch, it has nothing to do with, with sugar. Mm-hmm. That's right. nothing that's beneficial for them in nature. Like gazelles aren't sweet. 
to a lion, so lions don't need to taste sweetness. And wow. house mice aren't sweet, and so your kitty doesn't care about the taste of sweetness. They can't even taste it. Hmm. It's just a long list, though, of goes on the long list of the questions to ask someday in heaven. Mm-hmm. Why was it necessary for my dog to be able to taste sweetness? What is the survival benefit here? Just like just this one, Shasta, dog, good boy. Couldn't you... Couldn't you be more like a cat and not beg for my cookie just just this once? Yeah, but doesn't Shasta sometimes like give you a lick on the face? He he does. See, there's nothing sweeter than you, Aww. Tim. We weren't sure how you liked your coffee, so we didn't make any. Hope that's okay. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. That's an embarrassment when you find out something and you realize, oh, I didn't realize that. And oh and I've acted that way in front of somebody and I didn't even know that about them. That's embarrassing. Uh, oh. I feel badly. So, Tim, Whoa. Uh, I want to... I want to say I'm sorry. Whoa. Uh, I want to say I need to have more empathy. What did you do? I wasn't ready for this. And, this at, is... the, and at the same time, I'm almost amazed you've made it this far uh, in, in your life. <laughs> wow. You're... This is, almost feels like something you're going to need to issue another, another apology for. <laughs> another apology, maybe. I mean, I understood about I understood about some of the things that okay. you had to suffer through. Frustrations, I guess. The frustrations of the, the scissors and the ink smudges. Oh, <laughs> Look right here. Look at my left pinky right, right here there. this morning. I didn't think about that. I mean, even like can openers, I under I didn't it's think about that. It's a tortured existence. Torture, yeah. It's oh. a lot. And speaking of torture, this is the thing I have to apologize for because I didn't realize that you've had to go through so much, even to make it to this point in your life. The, <laughs> even it's amazing even that here. you get out of bed in the morning. The torture <laughs> of the spiral notebooks and their three ring binders. Try writing in those when you're a lefty. I'm telling you what. <sighs> You'd be better off flipping them upside down and just telling your teacher, hey, can you read this backwards and upside down for me? Because, man, it was a pain to write in this thing. There's the spiral note, but did you have like the- You get the, the little thing, spiral the indentations, indentations along your hand? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel very seen by this, Steve. Thank yes. you, by yeah. the way. I, I just seen. I just okay. want to <laughs> say thank you on behalf of all the lefties. I feel badly. I was like, I need to have more empathy. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah you do, actually. And That's made, true. And you made it this far. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Huh. As refreshing as that first sip of coffee in the morning, this is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. At some point this afternoon, yeah. we're all going to hear this sound. And I don't know exactly what it's going to sound like, but it's going to be startling. But we thought it would be fun to see what the sound won't sound like. Debbie texted us to, from Maryland to say it will not sound like crickets. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Yeah. Julie in Oigo says, if you hear a donkey sound, that's not the national alert. So no, it will not no. sound like a donkey. No, that's not it either. Good morning, family life. Sylvia May- Mayer from Beaver Dam. Oh, my parrot just did it too. <laughs> This is Nancy, and I'm from Stair. <laughs> Darcy Hughes, Lockport, New York. The national alert today at 2.30. What will it not sound like? Wah, 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 wah. Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Paul from West Corner. Here's the sound. You know what's weird? No, I feel like it no. might actually sound like that. <laughs> that that could actually be what the sound is going to be. We'll find out today at 2.30, we right? You might have gotten it. I feel like maybe the national alert system ought to hire you. You could just do that live every time we need an alert, you know? Anyone else wish morning started just a little later? Yeah, we get that. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Sometimes you get upset and you're up in arms. Right. And you're like, up in arms. Like, where, where did that other? come from? Actually, I, is it like a roller coaster? 1576 was the first time that was used. 1576? Yeah. It's, We've it, been up in arms since then? We have. It's a long time to be up in arms. Um, oh, I'm getting tired. Why aren't we ever down in arms? Well, I don't know. but it, it, <laughs> Like, when you're equally not concerned, like when you're super chill, why doesn't somebody say, well, look at him. He's so down in arms. Well, you know, you go on stage, you break a leg. Oh, or you cry your heart out. Your lips are sealed. Pat on the back. Pulling your leg. Oh, that's sweet, too. You can see it eye to eye. Look down your nose. <laughs> Cost an arm and a leg. Give in the cold shoulder. Get off my back. Here's one I've never heard of before. Huh. Foot in mouth. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Live demonstration from 6 to 10 weekday mornings on Family Life. <laughs> 
today is going to be great. We just know it. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. See you later, alligator. Hey. In a while, crocodile. <laughs> Different ways to say goodbye mm. with animals. <laughs> like, <laughs> take care, polar bear. Oh, is there okay, one that your okay. family has or that you can come up with? Chow, chow, chow. Like, you know, the dog breed, the chow chow? Good morning. Donald from Henrietta. Out the door dinosaur. Oh, oh I like out it. Out the door dinosaur. Oh, stomp out the door on that one. My name is Jill, and I'm from Earlville, New York. Arriva Turkey. <laughs> Arriva Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> when my son was little, he couldn't say Arriva Turkey. He said Arriva Turkey, so it just, it just stuck. Vaughn from Jamestown. Pretty soon, raccoon. Ooh, Ooh, pretty soon, raccoon. I That's like good. that one, Vaughn. All right. Turn right onto Broad Street. Uh, my name is Jerry, and I'm calling from Oil City, Pennsylvania. Oh, wait, I got to go. Okay. Hello, kangaroo. I yes. like that one. Hey, we'll just we'll just bounce, all right? We'll bounce. <laughs> my name's Dottie, and I'm from Ithaca, New York, something we use all the time at my husband's dental office. We have a bunch of Christian patients, and we say goodbye to each other by saying, see you here. See you there. See you in the air. Anywhere. I don't care. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.